Um, language on becoming a lady was an idea that I'd had uh, maybe a year, two years ago. And it was all about, uh, I, I, over the years I've performed as a panto dame, I've done a little bit of drag, and the idea of the actor and the role. So you have this drag queen who has this, who's, his name is Robert, but then he's his, old, his other persona, which is the divine Diana, and how those two inform each other. And then the play sort of expanded as I was writing it into a sort of a history of, uh, of, of this gay man's life over 40 years. What it was like to grow up in Limerick, uh, or any small town actually, mm -hmm. not necessarily Limerick, uh, being gay in a small town, and then that, which happens to a lot of people, that they move away. Um, uh, some people to London, but some people to Dublin, and how that experience of moving away from home to find yourself. Uh, and also in how he gets on with his family, how he gets on with his, uh, his friends. Um, he falls in love, he has his heart broken. And also at the end of the play, he actually comes back home. He comes back to the place he ran away from. And how like, you know, like Dorothy, there's no place like home. So that no matter where you're from, you know, where your friends and family are is always very important to you. As I was writing, it, sort of the themes of, of, of loneliness, um, of, of not feeling that you belong somewhere, the feeling that you, you don't fit in. Uh, as Robert realizes that he's gay, he feels that he doesn't belong anywhere. So that he has a very lonely time uh, when he was adolescent. And then there's a whole sequence where he does find uh, a family of his own, that he creates a family. Uh, not the one he's born into, as he says, but the one he created for himself from nothing. Uh, both friends, uh, people he meets through his life, other gay men. And also there is a sort of theme of um, accepting who you are, not hating yourself. Uh, he has a, a, quite a struggle accepting his sexuality early on, and then later on he learns not to hate himself and to accept what he is. And also his friends and family accept him, and that sort of growth of starting off hating yourself and eventually loving yourself. Dearest darling, sister of my soul, I know you're up there looking down on us. At last, you have joined your rightful place among the stars of heaven. We miss you terribly down here. We miss your wit, your beauty, your ability to drink 20 vodkas and still walk a straight line in high heels. The only thing you ever did straight. Watch us. Intercede for us with St. Judy and St. Billy. Find yourself an angel. Ruffle his feathers. And we now join with the celestial choir as they welcome you, darling mixture, into heaven. Language on Becoming a Lady is one of those rare gems that you get where everything sort of comes together and you have a hit on your hands despite yourself almost. I mean, it, this is a play that almost never happened because we had, our, we had our year laid out, but Miles came to us and said, look, I've got this idea for a play. It's a one-man show. It's a story I want to tell. Uh, I've had it in my head for quite some time. Quite possibly the best thing. It's certainly the best thing we've done so far. It's the best thing that we will have done in a long time, and this is a show that's going to tour and tour and tour. And it's one of those rare things because it came from here. It was a, it was a story that Miles wanted to tell, and we wanted to help him tell it. And then Manny got sick. Really sick. It all happened so fast. I go home at weekends, spend time with her. She was in and out of hospital, losing weight, her hair, her face becoming drawn with pain. We'd watch, we'd watch the old musicals sing along. I'd tie scarves around her head so she could feel glamorous. Daddy didn't know what to do. He was quiet, careful putting on a brave face for the neighbours, but they both knew. It was only a matter of time. She went into the hospice, and my brothers and sisters and I arranged for somebody to be with her all the time. A rota of waiting and watching.
I was with her the night before she died. She turned to me and she said, You're a good boy, Bobby. I'm not Mammy. I should have come home more often. No, no, no. You have a life up there. That's good. Can I get you anything? Are you happy? What? Are you happy? Yes, Mammy. I worry about you, love. You don't have to, Mammy. I'm fine. Work's fine. Everything's fine. No, no, not, not work. I don't want you to be lonely, love. Do you have someone? <laughs> what? Do you have someone? Someone who you belong to. Someone who belongs to you. Someone to love. <laughs> yes, Mammy. There is someone. Someone special. That's good. I'm glad. I think I'll close my eyes for a bit now. You do that, Mammy. I'll be right here. <laughs> she died the next day. Of course, I'd lied. There wasn't anyone special in my life at that time. But it was the kind thing to do. Rather than tell her that my heart was broken. Really broken. Shattered. Because there had been someone. Someone who I belonged to. And who for a while belonged to me. The themes are universal. You know, it's not about, uh, it's not really about sexuality. It's about somebody wanting to be themselves, wanting to be accepted. Somebody want to just live their lives the way they want to and have the uh, the respect and the love of their peers and of their family. So it's about a sense of belonging, it's about a sense of place, it's a, about a sense of self-worth. And while it is about a gay man, it could be about anybody because we all want the same things. We all want to be accepted for what we are. We all want love. We all want to those things. And that's why I think the play is going to run and run uh, and is going to be seen by many different kinds of people. You know, I mean, the audiences that came to see it in the bell table uh, weren't exclusively gay by any means. It was just a, a, a broad spectrum of people. And the age was interesting as well. There were, we had young people there, we, we had some kids there, we had older people, we had grannies there. Everybody lapped it up because it's a very human story.